On the night of October 5th, 2022, officers were dispatched to a complaint of vehicles racing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. However, the incident was quickly upgraded to a major crash involving multiple vehicles. As the first squad arrives on scene, one officer immediately begins directing traffic. Hey, keep going, keep going, bro. Keep going, keep going, keep going. While the other heads towards the scene of the accident. The driver of the vehicle is found sitting on the outside of the car on the curb. Are you okay? He's, he's trapped. The passenger seems to have been thrown into the back seat of the vehicle. Fire. Uh, negative. I'll get you vehicle information shortly. All occupants are out of the vehicle. There's one occupant trapped in the black Mercedes. They're uh, trying to get him out right now. Did someone pull uh, the vehicle or did you climb out? Do you have ID? No, I don't have ID. What's Were you driving this car, man? Were you driving this car, man? Were you driving this black car? What's your last name, bud? Huh? M-U-R. Oh, my f***ing I can't feel my leg, y'all. Wait, we're gonna get a check. Ah! Spell your last name again for me. M-C. M-U-R. M-U-R. M-C. What do you got, Ben? M-C-U-R. Spell your last name again for me, man. M-C. M-U-R. M-U-R. T-R-Y. T-R-Y. T-R-Y? What's your first name? J I J I J I J I J A Y J A R J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J A Y J the officer learns the driver's name is Jaquan Q. McMurtry. After blocking traffic off with cones, the second officer runs to the scene and checks on one of the other vehicles involved in the crash. Anyone in here? Trapped or not? Yeah. Hey man, were you in here by yourself? Yeah? What's hurting right now? My whole body. Your whole body? Okay. You got a drive license or anything on you? Uh, okay, get to it. Okay, that's I fine, bud. Okay, which way were you driving? I'm going straight. All right. What happened? Um, they was at that. They was at the lights up there, right? They stopped at the green lights. Uh -huh. So I went around them. Uh -huh. I was just sitting there. I don't know why, but I just had a feeling something's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Then I just looked in my mirror and I checked and I seen the first car fly so past me, almost hit me. Mm -hmm. Then that car, I don't know what happened, and he just, I just got hit. Did you I, feel where you got hit at first? It came from the back. Oh, okay, what's your address? Ah, bro. Oh, what's your, what's your address? Yeah. What's your address, man? Yeah. Okay. Bye -bye. Ah! Oh my God, bro. What's up? Was, was this young man in this car right here? Okay, do you see where he was sitting? He was, I, I, I think he was the driver. The driver? Okay, thank you. The officer shares Jaquan's information to the firefighter. It is immediately apparent that he is suffering from many injuries, and officials soon discover that he will need to be put in a neck brace to prevent further injury. As the officer walks away, you can see the wreckage from the car is scattered all over the road. Reports conducted at a later date determined the car was traveling 109 miles an hour during the street race that caused the accident. A firefighter is seen starting up the jaws of life for the passenger of the vehicle whose identity is not yet known.
alone. The passengers' injuries also appear much more severe than Jaquan's, and so officials focus their attention towards getting him into an ambulance first. Why are they racing? So there was racing another car? Yeah. The other car then started hitting each other's stuff going. That car hit me from that side. From that side? I guess. Uh -huh. From the back. And then the other car almost hit me from this side. Okay. So as soon as I seen that car almost hit me, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of, you know, got over a little bit. So I'm, I'm looking and my other mirror seeing the other car. Uh, so, mm -hmm. You want to go to the hospital? hospital? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Mom. Can you walk? Can you walk? Uh, Can you walk? I don't know. I haven't got off the car, Mom. I'm yes. hurt. Don't uh, move, man. Mom. Sorry. I just need to breathe. Is the car... Good, I don't okay. care. Sir, can you just tell us you're good? I'm gonna go over there by Uncle Black. I, I just, it's a possible Uncle Black is over there. Possible. Okay? I'm not saying he's involved. This motherfucker was flying. I understand that. That's why I need to secure the area, okay? Can you just do me a favor? Maybe hang out over there? Y'all better do what y'all gotta do. I'm not playing. Okay. This motherfucker's truck. I heard this man. I was like, oh, I don't know. You guys are all gonna have to be over here, okay? We just gotta give them some room, okay? So can you guys step back this way? I know, man, but we gotta secure the scene, man. So to that tree, all right? That tree. As long, hey, you can be right here. You can be literally right here, okay? I just gotta run to to the tree, all right? So can you all get it on this side, please? Huh? <laughs> I know, man, but hey, we, we got to try to keep a little bit. That I don't know. I just got here, so. All right. Wait, it wasn't the other driver? Oh, um, I haven't went over there. I just came no, straight I'm to about you. A car. It, just that car I know of, man. That's the car that hit Hey, guys. Oh. Sir, can you guys just stand over on that side of the tree, man? I appreciate it, man. Just send an ambulance to come uh, take you there. That's my you baby through, man? and my, my truck. That's my motherfucking son. Did they make it? Hey, uh, he okay the motherfucking son. Well, just so you guys know, I'm going to send the guy over here. It's uh, his family member. He's, he's, he's doing okay. He's going to end up taking him to the hospital. Okay. That, he was, just, he was just worried he wanted to come in, and I'm like, I'm told up. I don't want you to get tackled by the cops. I, I understand, man. So... You're here for this guy, correct, sir? Okay. I just got to make sure when the officer comes back that we got his info and all that before you guys head okay, out, I'll okay? Okay, I'm just I, I, I understand, man. I just wanted to let you know so you guys I'll don't appreciate. rush out of here and all okay. that without at least us getting some info. Okay, I'll so, appreciate Okay, no problem, man. I appreciate it. 7279. Hey, Grayson. Grayson, you got caught in a fucking break. All right, the balloon area report is in. Uh, so far, it's just two fractured ankles and a fractured wrist, but obviously we don't know anything about the internal. Hey, Mac, did you get dude's info? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because his family member's here, so I just wanted to make sure that we got yeah, his hey, info. Hey, bud, we got to go on the other side, No, too. he's here. Hey, he's here for him, so. No, I know. Right. We, we we put mom over there, too, right now. Oh, okay. And my sergeant, you got to be outside the tape, bud. All right, well, I'm gonna go back with my mom. Okay, I appreciate it, man. Fine, man. Listen, even his mom, we, we put outside, man. Okay, I just, it's, I, it's just for our safety, him. Make sure we get. Check on him, man. I know. Yes. We just gotta make sure we get his treatment, get him out, and make him. Okay, make that's sure he get checked on. All right. That's fine. I appreciate it, man. All right, thank you. An MFD do by the man, so yeah, right. that's why I was like, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, even mom, we we moved right. out. This officer takes a closer look at the wreckage and reveals just how far the tree pushed into the car. It appears the trunk of the tree is just touching the base of the front row seats. It is a miracle either occupant was able to get out of the vehicle at all. Can you, can you get out on that side? Uh, you won't be able to move right now, man. Not right now. We, we, got, we got med rigs and stuff coming in. We can't leave right now. It's a large quantity of marijuana in the back. Okay. That guy you're not going to get a lot of answers from. He's in Portland. Okay. All right. But somebody should probably ride in the back with them when they go. I got to go, bud. Got to go. I'm coming. I got to go. You got to go? Yeah. 
Uh, make sure you slam it. I'll slam it. I'll slam it. Yeah, I got it open right there. Yeah, Is that your last name, bud? McCarthy? Yeah, I'm on this one. I'm over. Please take this off. 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 Please it's my chest, but please, please, my heart. There you go. It's oh, giving out, bro. Where is he? Oh, I am slow. Bro, it hurt, bro. It's giving out on me, bro. Please help me. All right, my heart, get out. All right, hold on. Give us one second. We're going to get you on the cot. We're going to get you on the cot, all right? Hey, hold still. What is this thing? You don't know? Yeah. Hold on, give us a new thing. How's the way broken leg, Tima? So who is this guy? They don't even know who he is. Who's, who's this guy? That's... Hey, relax! He's the passenger of the BMW? Hey, relax! He's not talking or anything right now. He's going in and out of passion. Yeah. So, let me just let them work on him, and then once we get there, we'll get everything together. You guys didn't get any name Nothing, dude. Nothing. That's what the boss was just calling me about. Yeah, there's some more right in the center council area. Then he's got one, two, three, four, five, like five phones. Six phones. Yeah. Came out of this car. Bigger bag of weed. That's in my wagon already. Nope, nope, no. Lay back. Sarah, lay back. Hey, lay back. Where is it? Relax. Mm -hmm. Gotta Jesus. relax. Oh shit. He's got a, he's had a big piece of glass in his skull. Okay, I'll let Sarge know. So the passenger apparently has like a big piece of plastic or glass in his skull. So that's why he's going in and out of conscious, so it could be a serious. At the hospital, this officer searches the bag that belongs to the driver of the vehicle. The officer started the search after medical staff told him they saw a small bag of weed through the opening. Dude, are you still at work? Hey, uh, you better come back to the hospital, dude. This this kid's got like a like a fucking fistful of crack, dude. Oh, did I miss that too? This this dude's bag is full of drugs, dude. I missed, I missed the whole it's thing. It's in the prison. It's in the prisoner property thing. He he had like a little. He's got like a little gram of weed. But then when I opened up the backfill bag, he's got a bunch of corner cuts all wrapped up. And it's like, there's a tan substance, there's a white substance, there's a rocky substance. Like, this dude was f***ing dealing. Oh. Oh. I'm just, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, dude. Like, like, this is... Yeah. yeah, like like a load, dude. It's 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 in his little fanny pack. Hold on, I'll describe it to you. Yeah, dude, he's got like uh, dude, it's like if you balled up your fist, he's got like a bag, and then inside are like three separate bags. One's got a bunch of rocks. The other one's got like some uh, some like like tan. Like, like, it looks like Parmesan garlic colored. You gotta uh, come back and get this stuff, bro. Yeah, quite a bit. Can I see? 
touch anything, officer. Yeah, when you oh, when I, fentanyl. What is that? I, said, I don't know if there's fentanyl in it. Mm, that's a lot of sh**. Mm -hmm. Do you think these diamonds are real? Uh, oh, that's a girl. Oh! They tried anything like that. I, I didn't know if I went towards the charge of, you know, like distribution. Or... No, you can't. Not unless it's 5,000 or more. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't know. So. Did um, it come in that bag or did you put it in that bag? The drugs? Yeah. No, they came in that. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. So, um, but did you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. I hate doing this because it's hip Oh, you've got your camera on. Okay. Just keep the camera on. Okay. Put it, in the, put it back into his bag. I'm wanting back into his bag. Okay. Because that's his property. Okay. Yeah, I got the bag. It was located in as well. It was in this one. Still? No, it was, it was in here. Was it in the bottom? No, I guess when the when nurse was, was moving it, when I was out there, like this part was open, and she saw it was in here like this. Oh. Um. This part was closed. This was inside here. Okay. But yeah, the weed was just like sitting like there. She's like, uh, he's got weed on him when she was moving the bag to do whatever. Okay. So I have to write a report saying that you're the one who found it. Sure. Cause just because the DA's can be like, oh, how did you notice that he had blah, blah, blah. You have to go through the clothes, right? Correct. So I go through everybody's belongings on admission to see what they have, and then that way they have, let me charge in the computer so when they leave they have everything that they need to go through. And I opened just the front pocket of his bag and I found the weed in the front pocket, and then I didn't look at anything else. Okay. And then that's when when I left and I told you, and then you went and looked in the back pocket, and I was like, oh, I missed all the rest of it. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I went. That, that's fine. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. are good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Jaquan's history with the court and their tactics with bail bonds frustrated the public, and especially the parents of Denari Peer, who was the passenger in critical condition. Unfortunately, Denari succumbed to his injuries, resulting in a parent's worst nightmare. Denari's parents were particularly upset about why Jaquan was even out of jail at all. To their frustrations, they would discover the court released Jaquan on multiple felony charges several times over the course of the previous previous two years using bail bonds. Jaquan's first release on bail was for the amount of $1,000 for the charge of possessing a firearm as an adjudicated delinquent in March of 2021. Five months later in August of 2021, he would get arrested again for three additional charges of possessing a firearm as an adjudicated delinquent and one charge of bail jumping. Within a week after his arrest, he would pay a $3,000 cash bond to be released again. Within a few weeks, he got a ticket for operating a vehicle without a valid license, but appears to have not been jailed for that charge. Two months later in October of 2021, Jaquan was arrested for possessing one to five grams of cocaine with intent to distribute and posted a cash bond of $500. Interestingly, it appears the complaint for this charge was not filed until nine months later in July of 2022. Adding confusion to the timeline, it appears that Jaquan then failed to appear in court in August of 2022, resulting in a forfeiture of his $500 cash bond. Days later after Jaquan appeared in court that same month, they set and post another $500 cash bond for him. In September of 2022, Jaquan's bond was forfeited again, although the Wisconsin court website does not make the reasoning clear, and then they seem to correct themselves at a later date, suggesting they vacated the forfeiture of the cash bond. 
This makes sense as this was just a few weeks prior to the events that have taken place in this video and Jaquan was out on bail at this time. A couple weeks after the events in this video, the court posted another cash bond for Jaquan for $50,000. A week later, a man by the name of Marvel Coleman, a counselor for troubled youth, paid for Jaquan's release. Seemingly, additional bonds were also set for Jaquan's previous charges weeks afterwards, one in the amount of $5,000 and another in the amount of $20,000. These were all paid, and the $20,000 bond seemed to be paid for with only $17,000. The next month, Jaquan was back out of jail. At this point, we count seven instances where the court had the choice between keeping Jaquan in jail or releasing him back to the public. Even after charges of second-degree reckless homicide and possession of more than 40 grams of cocaine with intent to distribute, understandably, the parents of Denari Peer were outraged by this decision. They contacted the local press and Milwaukee District Attorney John Chisholm to voice their concerns, particularly towards catch and release tactics, as well as low bond amounts that don't equate to the crimes committed. This just can't keep happening. When we spoke to John Chisholm, he blamed the commissioner. It just seems like he's doing more damage to the community than good. You think that if the DA would have been tougher on McMurtry, your son would still be here today? Definitely. Yes. If someone is proving that they're, uh, they have a habit of committing crimes, especially while pending charges are, are, are still underway, um, there shouldn't be a bail for that. You know, and part of these charges were, was felony bail jumping. So, um, you know, I, I'm all for giving someone a chance, but once that person shows that those chances are just going in vain, that I believe that, um, they should be a lot stricter and there should be no bail or a substantial um, raise in the bail. Uh, Denari didn't get a second chance. So basically it was $500 and he was at home. Um, no ankle monitoring or any type of supervision and he was just allowed to roam the streets and is actually doing the same thing now. He's at home. Yeah, he's at home. On GPS monitoring, we have attempted to reach out to Chisholm. Um, we have also um, spoken with our ADA as well um, regarding the bail. When we spoke to them, the words that they used was fair. Right. Fair. Which I found insulting because you're telling the victims what's fair to the person that killed our son. It's disgusting. You know, to know that uh, that they're treating him, you know, with gentle hands, mm -hmm. you know, allowing him to go to a funeral funerals that were uh, of someone that wasn't related to him. Um, I mean, he's had a, a list of requests and wishes, and it seems like they're just giving him what he wants. And meanwhile, we're told what's fair. I miss his hugs and his kisses. Um, even though he was 20, he would just, we're very affectionate family. So, um, he would always give me and his dad hugs and kisses. And, um, I just miss him. I just miss him. In January of 2023, two months after Jaquan's final release, Marvel Coleman refunded his $50,000 cash bond. He cited that he was frustrated that the courts shared his information and that he was not aware that they would do that. Interestingly, Marvel shared that he worked close to Jaquan's family and his intention was to help. However, Marvel's own wife appears to have been unaware of Marvel's spending of $50,000 and even called the press to ask them what was going on, seemingly avoiding asking her husband directly. Before the events in this video, Jaquan was already facing numerous charges, which included four counts of possession of a firearm by adjudicated delinquent, one count of felony bail jumping, one count of not carrying a license, one count of displaying an unauthorized vehicle registration plate, and one count of possession of one to five grams of cocaine with intent to distribute. Of those charges, he was convicted of three counts of possession of a firearm by adjudicated delinquent, one count of not carrying a license, and one count of displaying an unauthorized vehicle registration plate. For these convictions, he was fined a combined total of $170 and was sentenced for a total of one year and nine months in prison, along with one year probation. One count of possession of a firearm by adjudicated delinquent and one count of felony bail jumping was dismissed. He is still awaiting a verdict and sentencing for his charge of possessing one to five grams of cocaine with intent to distribute. For the events seen in this video, he is being charged for 
one count of second-degree reckless homicide, one count of knowingly operating a vehicle without a license and causing death, three additional counts of felony bail jumping for not showing up to his previous court hearings, and one count of possessing 40-plus grams of cocaine with intent to distribute. On August 8, 2024, Jaquan was found guilty by a jury trial on one count of second-degree reckless homicide, one count of operating a vehicle without a license and causing death, and three counts of felony bail jumping. He was found not guilty of possessing 40-plus grams of cocaine with intent to distribute. His sentencing for these verdicts will be determined on September 20, 2024. Denari Peer's parents, Nicole Bird and Jackie Peer, have been heavily outspoken about their son's case and the need for bail reform in the state. They have made news appearances as well as online petitions to change the state's standards, in addition to ensuring Jaquan is sentenced to the fullest extent of the law for his crimes. I knew it wasn't just a regular traffic accident. Mm -hmm that um, Jaquan was driving, um, I mean, reckless isn't even the word to use, you know, when you're driving in a 35 mile an hour zone going 109 miles an hour with no valid driver's license. Your son got a ride from someone who he trusted. He did trust him. He just needed a ride. My son didn't have a chance to make that decision for himself. He didn't have a chance to get out of the car mm -hmm. when Jaquan started driving that way. It's been rough for us, you know. Uh, that's, that's my heart. <laughs> that's my son, man. I miss him so much, I know. They've also made a dedicated Facebook group that not only keeps the public aware of their son's case, but brings to light other devastating criminal cases in Milwaukee. You can find those links in the description below.